Hello, programmers, and welcome to another episode of Dumbest Code. I'm your instructor, Chris Franklin. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to dive into the world of Flask uh, and start learning about all the power that it can give us as developers. Now, if you don't know what Flask is, Flask is what is called a micro framework. Uh, micro doesn't mean that it's uh, not powerful, but it does mean that it's a limited set of features compared to some of the other uh, web development frameworks that exist out there, like Django, which is the popular one in the Python world. Now, Flask gives us a lot of power for creating um, APIs. It lets us create backend services, microservices, and um, we can also serve up web content using Flask. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to look at um, just a really basic uh, Flask application and start to learn how to actually set up uh, uh, endpoints and return HTML for uh, the user. So anyone who hits our site will actually be able to see something. So what, how we're gonna start here is I already have a window open. I use PyCharm for my IDE. Um, I like the integrated environment that it has. So um, if you wanna learn a little more about PyCharm and some of the power it gives you, uh, I'm gonna put a little card link uh, up to PyCharm up in the up in the top here of the video um, but let's go ahead and get started so we're already in a virtual environment we've got everything separated out that we need so we're just going to in our terminal window here say pip install flask and that's the only requirement for getting a basic service up and running now I've already run flask on my system before so all of these uh, go a lot faster than they will for you if this is the first time installing flask uh, but it, it brings in a lot of things uh, that are super powerful and um, we'll get into those in further uh, videos but for now let's just start working with the basics of flask so up here what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a new uh, python file and i'm just going to call this uh, my main file and then we can start to actually write our application now to get an entire application up and running is not going to take very many lines of code so the all we have to do is import Flask um, from the Flask uh, library here. So uh, this is the only thing that we're really going to need right here. Now we want to create an app. And we want to pass in the name of the file that we're running here. Okay. So this is it. This is the entire Flask app. We could run this now. Nothing would show up, but it would at least spin up an application server and we'd be able to see that everything was running properly. Okay. Um, to actually execute this, though, we'll have to, two spaces before, we'll have to use our dunder name equals dunder main. Oops. Having trouble spelling here today. Okay. And then we just run the application. So this sets up the, the entire application framework and this runs it. Now, as I said, this isn't gonna do much. I can spin this up. You'll be able to see that it's up and running, but nothing will show. So let's actually make it show something. To do that, what we're gonna use is a decorator. We're gonna use app. So this is a reference to app up here. And then we're going to use the route decorator. And we're going to give this the base route. So this is going to be our home page. And then we can create a function to actually render what the home page is going to look like. Now we can call this whatever we want. I like to call it the same thing as what I'm building here, which is home. Uh, just makes it a little cleaner, easier to understand what's actually happening. Uh, now in here on our return statement, we can return HTML and this will get rendered in the browser. So we're going to say hello Flask and uh, then we're going to close our HTML. So this is valid HTML now. Now let's go ahead and run this. So if I click the little green arrow here I can tell it to run main. It'll spin everything up for me and then I can click this button here and it'll take me into my browser and you'll see hello Flask is showing up in H1. Okay. So we have a header now that says hello Flask. That's it. We have an entire application up and running. 
took us only less than five minutes to get everything installed and ready to go. And I chatted quite a bit during that. So you can see Flask is super powerful, easy to get up and running. Now, there's also a lot of things that we can do with this um, that we'll dig into deeper later. But uh, right now I want to show you uh, one of the most useful that you'll be because just having a static page like that isn't all that useful. So we're going to create a new API endpoint and we're going to say this is our greeting endpoint and we're going to pass in a name. Now using these angle brackets here uh, around the name of the thing we want to pass in allows us inside of our uh, definition here to extract the name value out of the URL path. Okay, So this is a way for us to pass parameters via the via the URL and extract them into the function down below. So all we'll have to do here is return and we're going to use our h1s again and this time we'll say hello name. Okay. Uh, now I used, I, I just realized I used some uh, 3.6 uh, functionality. Uh, if you're not on 3.6 or newer this will look completely foreign to you but uh, we can use the the function identifier here to actually inline be able to extract the name uh, or embed the name into the string here. This is just a really nice way of appending strings together and uh, with the variables inside. So uh, if you're not on 3.6 yet, I suggest upgrading to it because it's pretty neat uh, with some of these things that it allows you to do. So let's go ahead and run this. Let's see what happens. Uh, we've already got the application up and running here, so let's go to greet and I'll greet myself. Oh, look at that. Hello, Chris. That's it. That's all there is to it. Um, we'll get we'll dig into HTML templating uh, probably in the next tutorial and dig into uh, how you can build dynamic websites uh, and a wide variety of functionality using this. Um, but if you're looking to build a basic uh, REST API and you already know HTML or and Python, uh, sorry, not HTML, but if you already know uh, Python, you can get started having this return JSON, having this uh, return raw data here on the back end without having to worry about uh, the templating. So you've got everything you need to build a basic microservice at this point. So I'll leave it to you, and I really look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Bye.